Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and welcome to Thoughts On. This is a series where I analyze games and give my opinions on them. Today, we'll be looking at Remnant 2. I've been looking forward to this game since it first got announced back in December of 2022 during the Game Awards as I didn't expect developer Gunfire Games to release a sequel for Remnant from the Ashes, which is a great game by all occasions. In fact, it's so great that I made a video on it a few years ago, which you should check out if you're interested in playing the first one before or after jumping into Remnant 2. It's not required to play the first one in order to understand what's going on, but it's worth experiencing to go back and see how the series began, alongside some great boss fights, secrets to discover, and cooperative play, all which are significantly improved in the sequel. I have a soft spot for From the Ashes, and it's a shame that no one has ever heard of this game, judging from its 39,000 Steam reviews in almost 4 years. Because this game is awesome, and I mean, it's souls like with guns. What more can I say? No other developer has tried to replicate this since, and if so, I've probably never heard of them, assuming that the game flopped and didn't do what Remnant did. With the game going free on Epic a few years back, and the game becoming part of June's Humble Bundle, a subscription service that gives you monthly games, its player base has gone up a lot from there, and more people are beginning to wonder why they've never heard of the game in the first place. So how does Remnant 2 improve on the game's formula? Well, take everything from Remnant from the Ashes and double it. The game is a lot bigger than it looks, with more secrets to discover, items to get, and more bosses to conquer and fight for their sweet weapon mods alongside a rework to the entire archetype system, which are the classes in this game. I'll get into more detail on those later throughout the video. They've also expanded on the game's universe with new worlds to explore and further build diversity thanks to increasing the amount of ring slots you have from 2 to 4, which is one of the best additions to the game because gunfire games love their rings. There are many more additions too, but I'm going to try and make this video for both veterans and newcomers, as I have no doubt that the majority of the player base will be newcomers. So I want to give as much information as I can about the game, as well as make comparisons and bring up any changes that make a huge difference for the series. I also have an unhealthy amount of hours on the game in just over 5 days, so there's that too. A quick PSA before diving into the game. I'm currently playing the game on the early access build as I pre-ordered the game and got 3 days of playtime. The old footage you're seeing is from that build. Any suggestions, changes or things that I say may be subject to change as there are plans for a day 1 patch to come out potentially resolving some of the issues that I currently have. So just keep that in mind as I talk about the game throughout the video. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe with notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's get the boring stuff out of the way so we don't have to talk about it in too much detail, which is the same as my first Remnant video, the story. While it's interesting at first to meet all these cool characters, you'll find that the story isn't necessarily a main focus of the game, but rather a means of pushing the player through all the different worlds that you'll be traveling to. I won't spoil too much for those who don't want spoilers as I know there'll be people who prefer not to be spoiled, especially this early on in the first week of the game. But it's okay to put it lightly. Nothing crazy like the first game, but I will give credit for the new characters that are in this one. Some of them look awesome and it reminds me of some Mythos stuff, which I'd assume that's where Gunfire got some of the inspiration for the art style and environments. Let's move on to the bread and butter of Remnant 2, which is the gameplay. To summarize it, it's more Remnant 1, but better. The gunplay feels cleaner, there's more weapon and build variety, plenty of things to discover which as of right in this video are still being discovered, and the archetype rework aims to encourage all kinds of builds. Since the archetype changes are the biggest changes in the game, I'd like to give a brief overview of those changes and how it works. Archetypes are the classes of Remnant 2, each having their own perks, exclusive trait and set of starting gear. When you first start the game and reach Ward 13, you'll have an option of 4 to choose from, 5 if you pre-ordered the game. The Medic is a support-oriented class designed for team healing and improving survivability of teams. This class is a bit of a hard one as micromanaging and awareness are needed in order to get the full benefits out of this one, but in the right hands can be very helpful in keeping the team alive. They also start out with a freaking light machine gun, the Bone Saw, which shreds anything and everything in its path. But don't just pick an archetype because of its gun, as you'll be able to earn them later on, which I'll go into detail soon. This is a great co-op class, but I wouldn't recommend it for solo as you may lose out on damage later down the road due to the game's scaling, which will make content a lot harder to push through. The challenger is your all-out melee brawler, designed to be a tank and a close-range character. For those that have played Remnant 1, this archetype is a spiritual successor to the Scrapper class. Using melee weapons and aggression, the challenger strikes at its enemies, never backing down and can take massive hits thanks to its incredible kit. This is a great starter class if you're looking for something that can eat damage and not have to worry about healing as much. And if melee combat doesn't work out, you have a nice shotgun to make up for it. For co-op play, this works pretty well since you can aggro and take all the damage you want. 
Just let your friends know that friendly fire exists in this game. As for solo, I think this is a solid class to start with since you have a special perk that lets you get up after losing all of your HP, allowing you to stay in the fight for longer. The Handler is a Jack of All Trades class, boosting stats to damage, healing, and movement speed, while also getting a doggy that you can pet at any time. They can also provide different buffs such as damage, damage reduction, and healing for the entire party. Many of this archetype's abilities play around the dog, acting like a paladin of sorts where you can just give buffs. For core players, this is a solid starter as the buffs provide a great start to the game and scale pretty well later on too. For solo players though, this is the best starting archetype to pick, as the dog can aggro and take enemies off of you, making the game significantly easier in comparison to the original, which if you're like me and played through it solo, the game was a lot harder to say the least. The buffs it gives also apply to yourself as well, and the passive bonuses you get are really good too, giving you an edge in combat. I picked the Handler as my starting archetype. You get an AR-47 as your starting weapon, which is basically an AK but the Remnant version. The Hunter is a long-range damage dealer who prefers being out of the action, taking fights to his own hands. It revolves around weak spots and burst damage, as well as marking enemies to give information and increase their damage potential. A fairly straightforward class and a good starter for both co-op and solo, as the mark bonuses apply to all allies. In terms of solo specifically, it's good to be able to pick enemies from a distance as opposed to being close, resulting in taking less damage and only having to worry about range attacks. You get a hunting rifle as your first starting weapon, which is Old Faithful from Remnant 1 and is just as strong in this game. Finally, we have the Gunslinger, the early access archetype if you pre-ordered the game. If not, you can still earn this archetype but not until later in the game. This is a mid-range DPS class that's all about ammo conservation, reload speed, fire rate, and raw damage. In a nutshell, you just keep shooting the heck out of things at an incredible rate. For core play, I think it's decent as the team perk helps with giving more ammo to teammates, although I'd argue that early on the damage can appear lacking at first. For solo, I think it's decent as well but not the best as the handler damage passive perk scales a lot better than the gunslinger's one. You also start off with a hunting rifle, similar to what the hunter starts off with. Just because I said one of these archetypes is bad for something, doesn't mean you shouldn't pick it. You can make any of these archetypes your starting class and make them work in the right circumstances, so don't let my opinion sway you from what you want to pick. If you want to pick Gunslinger, pick Gunslinger. If you want to pick Challenger, go for it. There's no right or wrong in what you pick, and I think it speaks wonders about how much thought and consideration was put into making each of these classes. So once you get to War 13 and pick your starting archetype, you'll be introduced to the archetype menu. So on the left here, this is your prime archetype and this is your secondary archetype. I'll go over those in just a moment, but you only have one archetype when you first start. So you get, you get a prime perk, which every archetype has. So my prime perk for the handler is when handler is down, companion will attempt to revive him at 50% max health. Can be used to revive allies with command. Downed ally must have a relic charge. So... For solo, like me, this is very effective and handy because if I go down and the, and the companion's near me, he can just res me with my own relic charge. So it just helps to increase my survivability. Whereas like, you know, in, like in the first remnant, for example, or just any class without the handler, if you die, you die for good and you go back to the checkpoint. So each class has this prime perk that helps change up the way you play and heavily influences just like how the class works. Um, just quickly before I go over the archetypes or go over the secondary archetypes and once I get over the, uh, the perks, if I swap this over, if I swap this over um, my handler, the prime perk for the gunslinger is when activating any gunslinger skill, both weapons are instantly reloaded and gain infinite reserve ammo on all weapons for 8 seconds. Basically just means grrr for 8 seconds. You just keep shooting non-stop. And it's, 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 it's awesome. So... Once you get your archetype, you'll be leveling it up. You'll start at level one, you'll work your way up to level 10 and each level you'll be unlocking uh, skills and perks. So you start off with, with perks. So you've got damage perks, team perks, utility and relic. And, and these, per these uh, same class of perks applies to every class. So if you look here for the gunslinger, it's, uh, damage, team, utility and relic as well. Uh, so for the handler, which is my first class, you've got Pack Hunter, which increases your range and skill damage and increases with handler level. You've got your team perk, which is movement speed uh, by 10%, and all allies within 10 meters of the handler gain the handler's movement speed if faster. 
and reduces the stamina cost of actions for all allies by 15%, which is very nice. I, my utility perk is the is teamwork, so handler and companion gain 30% increased revive speed. While handler or companion are reviving, they receive 50% less damage. And finally, you have uh, my relic perk, which is best friend. Using a relic fully restores companion health and grants them 25% damage and 35% damage resistance for 15 seconds. Now, this will start at a lower value when you first earn the perk, but as you level up, you'll you'll get an upgrade for it, so it'll go higher. And then you've got your skills. So the first skill you get with the handler is the guard dog, which uh, makes your dog stronger and also gives them increased threat. So this is like the aggro dog, as I call it. Um, and I highly recommend to run this skill over the other two if you're playing solo. This is just an all-around great skill for um, allowing your dog to tank for you while you just deal with damage. Um, the, the dog also has three sets of commands. So on single press, you can uh, target an enemy for them to attack. On double tap, it allows them to be defensive, so to stay by your side. And holding the button is, to, is getting your dog to howl, which grants it the buffs that I was talking about earlier. So for guard dog, it's damage reduction. For support, it's 2% uh, of max health per second. And for attacking, it's a DPS increase for everyone in the party. And finally, we have traits. Um, I haven't gone into too much detail on them. I may as well go over them now while we're here. So every archetype has its own trait. And these traits are bonuses. They're like, they're like, you can treat them as like quality of life bonuses. Or not all of them are, but basically just bonuses that add to your character. Um, and you'll be leveling up these archetype traits as you level up the class. And once you max them out, these end up unlocking for all of your characters too. So regardless of what archetype you change to, um, you'll still have it, which is, which is very, very handy. So for the handler, I have kinship, which reduces friendly fire damage dealt and received by 80%. This is the maximum level. It starts off at, I can't even remember off the top of my head. Um, it starts off lower. So you start at level 1 and it levels up until level 10. So when you max that out, you max this out and unlock it for all classes. And in the gunsling, you've got ammo reserves, which is just basically increasing the amount of ammo that you can carry. Um, oh, I'll just quickly cover the gunslinger skills while I'm here too. So gunsling has got quick draw, which allows you to um, press... Uh, oh, sorry. Pressing it instantly fires six shots uh, at all the enemies in front of you on your screen. You can also hold it to do a, a charge shot. Uh, think of it like the that charge shot, like the hunter, oh, uh, the hunter golden gun in Destiny. If you've played Destiny, uh, side window increases your ADS speed and draw speed. Oh, sorry, ADS movement speed. Um, and cycling weapons will automatically reload all your guns. So this revolves around you just like switching back and forth between your guns. But this is what you want. This skill right here is what you want as a gunslinger. Bullet storm. Uh, un uh, increases fire rate and reload speed by 50% for all ranged weapons. And every time you kill someone, it automatically reloads your gun. So you could build this to be like a, um, like a, like you could have like some sort of mini gun setup. Um, or you could do like a bow setup too, because bows get their own uh, unique bonuses, which is 50% crit chance and uh, travel and uh, projectile speed, which helps. So if we're going to traits here, so. These are just like all little bonuses that you can apply to your character. So you've got, you've got Vigor, for example, which increases your max health. Endurance is stamina. Spirit is mod generation. Um, Scholar for experience gain. Damage resistance. Summons, which helps with the summoner archetype, um, which I'll go into a bit later. But all these traits help to kind of add up, um, to add up quality of life bonuses that help flesh out your build. Uh, and the maximum amount of points, I just earned it um, before recording this um, video today. Uh, the trade cap is 60 points, which is shocking to me. Because I expected it to be a lot higher than this. I think I think 60 trade points on this, on this topic now, I think 60 trade points is way too low. They need to either make it unlimited like it was in the first game. Or set the limit to be higher, like 80 or 100 points. I just think having more points is essential for being able to get some of the quality of life um, traits that you can earn in this game. Because like most of people, most people are going to be getting the essentials. So you're going to be getting vigor. You're going to be getting endurance. You're going to be getting spirit. And then after that, you kind of just branch out to whatever you want that fits your build. But you don't end up having enough to get additional quality of life um, things. So I think just doing that would uh, go a long way to uh, give us some of the extra or like allocating 
extra trade points to these quality of life traits to kind of just help flesh out our builds and you know feel a bit stronger as well so yeah all right so let's talk multi-classing so once you get through a portion of the game you'll be able to you'll be able to eventually um get a secondary archetype so this is earned by getting these uh things called engrams so they're like they're like special uh souvenirs that you buy from vendors uh so if i go over to the medic real quick i'll just run all the way there so if you run to each of these vendors they'll sell a special item i haven't earned the medic yet because i haven't bought the item i'm kind of glad that i didn't so i can show you guys what i mean i could probably do it right about now if i have the money i have to skip all this thank you so okay i don't have the money that's okay so they sell a special material that costs 1500 scrap so for the medic class you buy the medic pin from dr nora and once you buy this material you take it over to wallace which is which is the uh crazy guy over here he's the one he's the guy you want to talk to um anything archetype related so you talk to him uh you buy you you buy the class with the materials that you need i think it's like scrap and luminite crystals alongside the souvenir and then after that you get access to a second class in a nutshell uh, uh archetypes uh, secondary archetypes just provide a, a way of being able to use additional skills and perks uh but the only let down to a second class is that you can't use the prime perks so Whatever your prime archetype is, so for me it's the handler, I can only use the handler's prime perk. I can't use the gunslinger's unless I switch it. So like I did before, if I switch it, um, it goes to the loaded skill. And if I go back, it goes back to the handler's skill. So that's the only letdown, but it's not too much of a big deal because like, as much as prime perks are strong, you don't need both of them in order for like builds to function. And this is where the this is where the build variety or the... Or the um, theory crafting whatever you want to call it comes into play of being able to splice these different classes in order to gain certain builds so right now i'm trying to run a handler slash gunslinger setup so handler for my damage and my da damage as well as my damage reduction and gunslinger for my for my uh raw dps and i'm running it and i'm trying to run it with uh bullet storm so i'm trying to get like a fast firing build that just involves me shooting a bunch of bullets at enemies while also getting the damage bonuses from Handler. But I'm also thinking about swapping out Handler for Hunter or some or some sort. Because as much as the Handler uh, damage uh, damage gains are really good, it feels kind of lackluster. And I feel like I could push it more if I swap out Handler for, um, for like Hunter or something. So as you unlock all the other archetypes, you can swap to them at any time. There's no, there's no limits. There's no need to go to Wallace in order to buy like a switch for archetypes. You can switch them at your own will. Think of it like Final Fantasy XIV's uh, class system where you can switch to any class at any time on one character, but on Remnant. So as providing that you level them up, of course. So like, like I said, if I want to do the build that I want to go for, I could swap to Hunter, get the Hunter Prime perk, and then I could try run a Hunter Gunslinger setup. Or if I want to try like uh, summons with potions, for example, I could go alchemist and summoner which i just unlocked yesterday and i i do want to level that up too so like you can experiment and make all kinds of builds this is one of the best things that remnant 2 does that i feel like is a huge improvement over the original because we never had this sort of customization before uh the custom the best customization for um remnant 1 resulted in armor sets and just finding the right rings and amulets for our builds but since class uh, archetypes and, and the way the systems work in this game, it's very handy to be able to make all kinds of like builds and, and be able to swap at any time. And the perks make a big difference in um, how the game is played. Now, even though the team perks, obviously that's more for co-op, like even just without that perk, if you think about it, I'm just thinking about it now, like the game is still um, really good to play solo. Don't let the team perks think about it. Don't let these get in the way of you ruining your experience because you still get them yourself uh especially like the, like this one for example you get you, you the, the movement speed applies to you so it's not just for the team it's for you too like this one is more or less just for teammates it's not really anything crazy but the good bonus of this one is if you run the ammo box you can drop additional ammo so if you run an ammo box solo and you drop an ammo box before a fight you can have ammo waiting for you there so when you need to pick it up, you can just go ahead and pick it up without having to fight, like without having to like kill any ads and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about characters. So 
This is the character menu right here, and um, it's you, you've got all kinds of pieces here. So you've got your armor, uh, your relic, which is like your SS flask or your heels, uh, your heels of remnant. Uh, your three guns, so you've got a long gun, melee weapon, and a handgun, and then you've got your four rings and your amulet. So armor sets for those that have played the first game, armor set perks no longer exist in Remnant Two. Uh, uh, armors are now more or less just. Uh, t at least, in my opinion, I feel like they're more cosmetic because even though the resistances are nice to have, it's not like anything significant. E even just going to Nightmare and Apocalypse from what I've seen of other people playing it, it doesn't seem like armor is that big of a deal. So you can wear whatever you want. Obviously, you're going to have some specific armor sets. Uh, for example, the leader armor set. With the full set, this grants you a, ma a maximum armor of 168, which increases your damage reduction by 45.7%. This armor set is very handy on challenges. So anyone that's playing like a tank, you want this armor set right here. This is like a bread and butter armor set that every challenger should have because every bit of damage reduction helps to, to not only sustain, but keep yourself alive um, as a tank. So that's like one example. Um, but yeah, you've got like your, you've got resistances so bleed, fire, shock, poison, and just blights or curses. Uh, HP, stamina, armor, like I just said, and weight. Weight is something new they added to this game. Quote me if it's in Remnant 1. I do not remember, but I'm positive that the weight change is new. So you've got different weights, like in Souls games. And the heavier you are, the more stamina you use, and, and the less uh, dodge distance that you have. So... For example, with medium armor, with my Red Widow armor, this is a normal roll. You can't really ch see the stamina cost penalty because I'm not in a fight and stamina is now limited when you sprint around as opposed to being limited in the first game where every time you sprinted, even without enemies in your vicinity, you'd always drain stamina. Um, but if you put the, say, leader armor on, so let's put the full set on, it's a flop. <laughs> It's just a it's just a flop of you falling down to the ground because you're so heavy that you can't do a roll. <laughs> I think that's really funny. But anyway, um, that's that's armor for you. And if you want to know more details as well and be a nerd like like me, you could press R to open up the advanced stats. So this is where all the uh, all the little stats uh, for your build and items all get calculated. Everything gets calculated here. You know, damage reduction, mod cost, skill cooldown fire rate, reload speed, and things like that. Now, the important thing you should take note of is your power level. Now, power level is something that recently got added to Remnant 2, and it's a weighted average of your archetype level and weapon, weather, and weapon level. This is also used to calculate the world level of every area you go to in the campaign. So, when you can, uh, prioritize your scrap on upgrading your gear. Don't try to... Don't try to buy like consumables. Maybe buy some essential items uh, for your build if you have something to think about off the top of your head. But I highly recommend to commit your scrap to upgrading your gear instead because scrap gains in this game are very... It feels very limited compared to the first game. And consumables and concoctions now are a bit more expensive. Those are just like items that you can use. Um, so yeah, definitely prioritize upgrading your gear early on. Get that power level up. The higher you get it, the, the more success you'll have of getting, the, the better chances and I guess success you have of getting through these later um, areas as you get through to your last two planets or worlds, whatever it may be. So you've got amulets, which are just, you know, amulets and rings are basically, or jewelry are pretty much just bonuses um, to, your we to your weapons and gear. So, for example, with the build I'm trying to go for right now, which is like a fire, fire, literal fire, fire rate build, Fire rate. Okay, I, I won't go into that, but the Gunslinger's Charm increases fire and reloads people by 20%. Helps to keep the DPS up with my Chicago Typewriter. Then I've got the Firestone, which increases fire damage by 10% and res by 15. A Singe Ring, which increases all damage dealt to burning enemies. Um, Stone of Malevolence, which helps generate additional mod power for my weapon mod. And Spirit Stone, which also increases my mod power generation. So you can... These rings and amulets are... I feel like these are where you define your build. These core items here is where you define any build that you make in Remnant. It's not 
I feel like the archetypes, I, they, they help, but the rings is where, and the jewelry is where it's at. They want to try and prioritize uh, certain items for builds and, and whatnot. Lastly, you've got inventory, which consists of consumables, quests, and materials. Um, now, iron is your main source of material when it comes to upgrading weapons. So you'll have like your lower tier iron, and then you'll be transitioning into like the higher tiers, like uh, hardened iron and galvanized, for example. And you'll also need uh, luminite crystals and relic, uh, relic dust for upgrading your relic fragments, which I haven't gone through yet. I'll quickly go over them once I finish this inventory section up. But I'd like to show something really quickly too. Uh, if you go to Cassia, which you won't have her at the start when you first get to Ward 13 because she has to heal from having a root infection on her arm. But the second time you come back after visiting your first planet, you'll be greeted to Cass and her inventory. So she, she always sells iron. So I recommend that every time you're here, if you need, if you've got extra scrap, buy buy the iron every bit of iron that you get in this game goes a long way to lessen the grind and and get your weapons upgraded a lot faster she also sells a, a rare material i think only once called the simulacrum which you use to upgrade your relic and your weapons to the final level as well as some rings so she's got a chance for rings to spawn so every time you come back i, I don't know what the timer is don't think it's been figured out yet but there's like a time on when you can come back and forth um uh, to cast to refresh your inventory and no saving and quitting does not do it so don't even try it but that's just a, a, a little tip for you guys if you want to help max out your gear faster or you're lacking in in uh in the iron department lastly i'll go over relic fragments now relic fragments are items uh, new items that are um in remnant 2 and they just give you uh general buffs so you start off with a few when you you start off with like these cracked items so like cracked range plus three, for example, it just gives you plus 1.498% range damage. Uh, and as you get higher in archetype level, um, power level, you will start to get uh, stronger and more solid uh, items. So uh, where is it? Ah, oh, here we go. Solid charge melee cost. So this is like, I think this is one of the highest uh, items I have in the game at the moment. You've got, you've got Ordinary as well. I don't know if there is a rarity higher than Solid or like a better one um, than Solid. But in order to increase the uh, effectiveness, you just get the same mod and it goes up. It goes up by plus one and you just keep going and, and going. But uh, that leads me to a complaint that I have with this system. And that's just the, the way that it scales. Like see, 1.741% skill damage. That may seem like a big deal, but especially later on in the game, this is nothing. Like, I feel like they should not increase it by increments, but just increase it by whole numbers. So like, if you're going to do 1.741, just do 1.7 or or 2.3% or 2.5, like just whole numbers. Um, or like whole, like, I'm going to say whole numbers, like one decimal point numbers instead of just having these small increments. I, I just, or, or they just have to make uh, the Relic Fragment scaling a bit better in terms of like, um, increasing the amount that you get from it because it just feels so minuscule it doesn't it doesn't really it helps but it doesn't yeah like i said minuscule it doesn't really help that much so that'd be the only um feedback i have for that um another thing too since we're here is the mutators now mutators are new mods that have been also been added um into the game as a way of socketing items so this is to make up for I guess uh, the loss of armor sets. So now you can like you can like slot these mutators into your guns um, or into your weapons, and they give you special bonuses. So for example, we've got deadly calm, which continuously aim increases range damage by up to ten percent over three seconds, and it all, they also they all um, have a max level upgrade too, where at level ten you get a range critical hit chance increased by ten percent, which is very nice. Uh, two of the ones that I have. For my build uh, extender which it just extends the magazine capacity of the weapon um reinvigorate which i'm not really bothered to upgrade that much because i'm not going for a melee build but reduces the stamina of all charged melee attacks and bandit which on here grants 80 percent chance to return spent ammo directly into the magazine of this weapon all just adding like just more modifiers and like i said it's it's to, it's to kind of make up for the loss of the um of the armor set perks which no longer exists in this game 
You can also buy items from different vendors. So Reggie sells grenades and consumables. So he's got like the ammo box, the pipe bomb, the injectors. And he also sells some rings too. So these are, you don't have to buy them if you don't want to, but they're definitely just worth picking up just for the sake of having them because they could end up working with a build or something. So you never know. Uh, Mud Tooth here sells concoctions. So these are little drinks that give you uh, bonuses that last for about an hour. And when you die, they still stay too. Also, another thing too, when if you if you have a concoction, like say I had my I have my stamina one up right now on the top left. If I was to quit my game, uh, AFK for like twenty eight minutes, come back on, the item will still retain. So don't worry about losing concoctions if you log off. They still retain um, from the moment you quit the game. So that's a that that's very nice. It was it was also the same in the first game too. So it's um. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, you've got mod power generation, reticle sway, armor, stamina, health, more stamina, experience boost. These are just a few examples of concoctions that you can get. I have no doubt there's probably a few more that I'm missing, but uh, I think you have to get them first and then you unlock them in the vendor. And then lastly, we've got uh, Dr. Nora, which I visited earlier to talk about the medic pin. She just sells uh, curatives. So you've got, you know, antidotes, uh, ethereal orb bomb all these just help to um give you extra resistance to a certain element or just remove the effect entirely so oh since we're here another tip i would give as well is to buy bandages not just because of the bleeding but because of the gray health because in, in remnant 2 which i think is something new as well uh, they've added a gray health uh thing where your health can slowly regenerate um after an X amount of time, but it, it's really, really slow. So if you want to get the health back really quickly, uh, you can just pop a bandage and it, it puts you back up to whatever health um, the cap was for the gray health. Very handy and very cheap. When you combine all of the systems together, how does the game play out? Well, Bobby, I'm glad you asked. What you have here is an amazing third-person Souls-like shooter with cleaner gunplay than the original. Excellent use of visual effects and graphical fidelity to make the things you shoot feel impactful and satisfying. Alongside using the many weapons and items the game throws at you to either perfect the build you're looking for, or try something different. Another beauty of Remnant 2 is that it's very easy to change your build, no need to respec or farm items like a looter shooter. Well, if you're looking for something specific, you'll have to roll the same mode a few times until you get what you want, but that's besides the point. You change your weapons, your jewelry and armor, that's it. No additional steps or RNG needed. You just need to have the items and you're good to go. If anything, you're only respecting your traits, but that's very easy to do, even though it can appear costly. The use of having skills to use on top of weapon mods is a great addition too, giving the player more options and ways to further boost and improve their character, while also adding more ways to become stronger. I can't say I have anything to complain about with gameplay here, it's just solid. Exploration is another cornerstone of Remnant's gameplay, as finding items and secrets are some of the best things the game has to offer, especially when you go into a blind with little to no information. Finding items that may or may not benefit your build or perhaps make new ones, getting weapons that come with a gimmick of its own or just possess a stat that you're looking for, these sorts of things go a long way to make the game feel rewarding and worth putting your time and energy into. A few interesting secrets that I discovered was one of the hidden engrams or archetypes if you will that have been sprinkled into the game, which shocked me as I thought that the 5 base game archetypes were the only ones you can use. I unfortunately don't have footage of this, so I'll just have to explain it, but in the world of the Somme, at the Bloodborne Villages, as people are calling it, I walked next to one of the sewer holes and got kidnapped by a big creature. I woke up in-game, proceeded to kill this creature, and bam, he gave me a mysterious stone where my character promptly said to take it to Wallace shortly after. So I went back, took it to him, crafted the item, and it turned out to be one of the game's hidden classes, which is the Alchemist. A class that specializes in consumables and dropping these AoE rings that give yourself and allies cool buffs, such as fire rate and additional armor. I was sold as soon as I discovered this, as I couldn't help but think about the build potential that this game really has, and it's awesome. It was out of nowhere too, which made getting this a lot cooler. Another secret I discovered was a wind tower, which when you step on any of the symbols on any of the floors, it would play a musical note. I looked around to discover a secret area which had a book inside and the note order I needed to play in order to complete the puzzle and open something up. I took a photo of the order on my phone for easier access, played the notes one after another, and bam! A platform opened up with a ring waiting for me. 
This was so cool, and believe me when I say that discovering things like this yourself is more satisfying than looking up a guide for it. The game is filled with puzzles and all kinds of stuff like this, so looking everywhere on the map is advice to find items and goodies that will help you along your journey. Another interesting discovery which I'm positive would have been impossible to find without the Explorer Archetype perk is the Engineer class, which is slowly but surely becoming the fan favorite class in the entire game thanks to having turrets which can either be stationary or mobile. It's also ridiculously broken judging from its prime perk and it's truly remarkable that people were able to find this, as I got data mined but wasn't confirmed if it would be a DLC class or a base game one. I'm yet to get it myself but I can't wait to eventually get my hands on it once I get my Nightmare difficulty build going. I would go over other things I've discovered too, but we'd be here for ages and I don't want to spoil too many for those that would prefer to discover them themselves. But just know that there's plenty to hunt and look out for. On that note, Remnant 2 does have 4 difficulty settings which are Survivor, Veteran, Nightmare and Apocalypse, which is locked until you beat the game once. For a new player who's never touched Remnant or a Souls game for that matter, I recommend Survivor as it'll teach you the game without feeling too difficult. For Remnant Veterans, I recommend Veteran if you want to make the experience fun and just difficult enough while also not feeling like you go on a death spree like all these streamers are playing Nightmare. Nightmare is a difficulty I'd only recommend for the ones that have big dicks, but even then, it says it's not recommended unless you're fully geared. I thought about it at first, but then realized that I'm just going to waste more time killing the same enemies or bosses over and over again, so why not make it easier? Nightmare and Apocalypse are built for a new game plus sort of thing, since you're able to re-roll your campaign experience, which I'll go over now. Remnant 2 is designed with procedural generation in mind, so each time you start a new campaign, the game rolls the dice and generates an entire playthrough for you. Things that change include starting biome slash world, locations, environments, object and enemy placements, gear, NPCs, boss fights, and many more. These are just a few I can think of off the top of my head, but the gist is, every playthrough you do is different, so it's never going to be the same. In regards to the new game plus thing I mentioned, once you completed the game, you can re-roll the campaign and go again on either the same difficulty or something high if you want to see how good your build is. I'm currently doing a second run through on Veteran again to get my power level to 20, but also test out different builds and see if I can find something that's so strong it can push Nightmare no problem. I'm not so confident in the current build I have just yet, but with some changes, I can definitely push it up and make it strong enough to go through Nightmare with ease. And so far on the second run, it hasn't been the same at all. One of the areas that I went to on my first run is no longer available, which means if I want to get it, I'd have to re-roll again. That's where Adventure Mode comes in, where once you complete a world, you're, you're able to generate an instance of that one world that doesn't overwrite your campaign progress, allowing you to chase items and explore to see what other bits and pieces you can find. It's a great way to quickly go through a planet and see what the game gives you or what bosses you can fight, things like that. Few games are able to get this right, and Remnant 2 has earned this right alongside its predecessor. Oh, I forgot to mention, you're able to re-roll as many times as you want and at any time, no need to go through the entire area to do it. Remnant 2 is made on Unreal Engine 5 and it's the first Unreal Engine 5 game that I've played and let me just say, this game is so pretty. Environments are well lit and designed with fancy skyboxes that'll have you stare at it for a few minutes and just take it all in. Couple that with the world variety such as forests, machine facilities, villages, castles, dark and dense lands, and what you have here is a really good looking game that oozes with mythology and curiosity that you'll just want more. And we are getting more with 3 DLCs, so I can't wait to see what they cook up. Speaking of cooking, this game wasn't cooked enough in the oven performance wise. To put it lightly, I'd say that the performance is decent but not the best in general, as I've been reading around the subreddit a majority of the issues seem to be pinpointed to one thing that the developers pointed out themselves, and that's upscaling. Gunfire came out and said that Remnant 2 was designed with upscaling technology in mind, so in order to get the best performance out of the game, you have to run some sort of upscaling. Now here's the problem. Designing a game for upscaling is a bad decision and one that other gaming companies may take note of, should Remnant sell well. Because you're limiting what players can play their games in. Personally, I think that games should always be designed for native resolutions first, then upscaling after. Because not everyone likes upscaling. In most games, upscaling is a way for the game to render high resolution images for increased FPS but at the cost of image quality appearing blurry, which can turn some gamers off. I usually turn on upscaling in most of my games because I think having a little bit of extra FPS is nice. But then there are games like Dark Tide for instance that have horrible upscaling where blurs can be noticed instantly. Remnant 2's upscaling is actually pretty well done for the most part, and with DLSS performance mode, you can't really see the blurs unless you have a keen eye for it, so that's a positive. Running Remnant 2 without upscaling would cause the game to drop significantly in performance, 
rendering your frame rates to be at least 30% less of what you had with upscaling. It could be more than 30%, but long story short, native res isn't the way to go. My recommended settings for Remnant 2 with an RTX card are DLSS performance mode with shadows and effects turned to low, as effects seem to be the frame killer of Remnant 2. Set view distance to medium, put processing and foliage to high, and run the game on full screen mode as well. Borderless isn't the way to go, but it's still a good option if you tend to alt tab a lot. My frame rates on a 3080 were able to go between 70 to 90 in most places, 100 on a few occasions, and maintaining 60 when hitting those effect heavy areas. The game still looks great too, so you don't lose too much fidelity. But if you want the game to look a bit better than that, you can set effect quality to medium. It'll be a little bit of a performance loss, but nothing too crazy as opposed to putting it on high. Gunfire does have planned fixes for this as well as performance improvements coming to the day one launch patch, so I'm excited to see how it goes. This section will compose of suggestions and feedback I have for Gunfire, some which have been taken from the subreddit as well. I'll start with the trade point limit, which I achieved myself and I think it's way too low. I understand that Gunfire's intention was to add more build variety while also decreasing the amount of options players get, as the first game had an unlimited amount, meaning you could potentially max every trade point in the entire game, which would lead to absurd characters and wacky builds. The unlimited cap was cool and one of the main reasons I kept playing, since there was nothing else to grind for aside from getting missing pieces of gear and jewelry. Gunfire doesn't want players to all spec into the same things, knowing that they can obtain everything if they just put the time in to do so. They want players to think carefully about their choices and options. My take on this is that the trade point limit is fine, but it needs to be increased by at least 20 or 30 points from 60 to 80 slash 90. That way, additional quality of life traits can be grabbed on top of having the essential stuff in order to make your build work. Gunfire did come out and say that they don't have plans to do an infinite cap like the first game, but that the current trade point limit isn't set in stone, so we'll be getting more trade points in the future. My guess is that those caps will come in the DLCs, as DLCs add everything to the game, including new traits. If they decide to bring those for free, more power to them and us. Your main character likes to talk. A lot. And I don't say this lightly. The amount of times that he slash she says something after every combat encounter is really annoying. My suggestions are to either add a percentage chance that the character will say something before and after combat, so you don't hear it all the time, add a character voice slider of some sort so players can turn it all the way down to zero if they wish, or add an option to toggle the character's voice on or off. This helps to remove this annoying chatter that they say for each combat encounter and makes him slash her less annoying. Like, gas yourself up all you want during boss fights. I'm okay with that. Just not every freaking encounter. Gunfire must have a ring collection in the studio, because holy crap, this game has so many rings. Too many to the point where it becomes hard to find the rings that you're looking for. My suggestion here is to add a search filter on top of the rings menu, just so I can look up items by keywords and such. So if I want critical rings, I type up critical and it will highlight all rings that are critical related. Otherwise I'll have to browse through each one until I find which one I want and it's a pain in the ass. The search filter should be added to all other pieces of equipment too. Loadout slots is something that this game needs. I didn't feel like it needed it in From the Ashes because of how limited gear felt like in that game. But since Remnant 2 is double in size with more items, gear and classes, I think having loadout slots would go a long way to have us switch to different builds on the fly without needing to re-equip items over and over again. Start with 5 and then maybe increase it as more DLCs come out. I've been experiencing a bug where in the keybinds for controls, if I bind ping to one button, when traveling to a new area, it will bind that button to all the controls in the game. I'm not sure this is how it's properly triggered, but it needs fixing. I think part of it may have something to do with it being on controller controls, since it says controller before you find the individual option for ping. Remnant 2 is a contender for my game of the year alongside the Resident Evil 4 remake. It's fun, exciting, rewarding, satisfying, and more importantly, improves on everything that made Remnant from the Ashes a Souls-like shooter that it is. Not to mention it's double in size. Have I said that yet? There's plenty more secrets that the community will discover in the coming weeks, and I guarantee you there will be one secret that will take us months, if not years, to figure out. The game is also incredibly cheap too at $73 AUD, making it one of the best bang for your buck games of this year, as you'll get plenty of replayability and content thanks to its incredible build depth, procedurally generated campaigns, and awesome gameplay. If you've got a few friends, I highly recommend picking this up because the game is a lot better with people than playing solo. But if you're like me and you're a solo survivor, the game's got you covered and it's just as good too. An instant recommendation from me. Despite the performance issues, all it needs is a couple of patches and the game will be in full swing. This is the longest video I've made in years and 
I wanted to write a review on it because Remnant has a soft spot in my heart and it's just so well executed that I wish more third person shooters like this would come out. Even if it's not Souls-like. But we all know that first person shooters are dominating the gaming industry right now and they're not going to be going away anytime soon. If I miss anything, comment down below. I'd love to get a discussion going and talk about how the Remnant 2 experience has been for you. I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.